I'm going to preach on the word forever. All right. Psalm 23 it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Kind and gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that You be with us this morning as we meet together to worship You in spirit and in truth. Lord, I pray that we would do so in a way that's pleasing to You. Lord, I pray that You'd be with me, Your messenger, as I preach, that You'd give me clarity of thought and mind, Lord, and that You'd lead me in what I should say and not say. And Lord, I pray that You would direct the words that are spoken from this mouth into the hearts of the hearers. Lord, if there's someone here that's not saved, I pray that it would direct them and the fact, Lord, that they need to be saved before it's too late. And Lord, for those of us who are saved, I pray that it would speak encouragement to our hearts. And Lord, I pray as I always do, if there's any sin unconfessed in my life, I pray You'd forgive it of me, that I'd be fit to be used by You this morning. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now like I said, I could preach on this whole chapter, and I would love to do that. But I really want to focus on the last Two words there, which actually I would say is one word, but the word forever. I want to try. To, I want you to try to grasp what that word means. I mean, forever is a word that'll never fully be appreciated. I think while we're here in the flesh, I know every one of us probably when we were a teenager, at least a lot of you anyway, probably wrote a love letter to somebody. I would say that somebody in this congregation at the end of their love letter probably wrote, love you, and then put a four, and then a dash, and then an ever after. Anybody do that? Yeah. I think Millie did. I see her back there in the back laughing. <laughs> she probably wrote forever on a, a hundred notes. But anyways, uh, we, we didn't understand forever, did we? I mean, most of us didn't end up with a high school sweetheart, did we? And I'm sure you didn't end up with many that you wrote notes to like that, but... Anyways, I know this, I've sat at stoplights before, and I've started to get a little aggravated. You get aggravated at stoplights? I tell you, especially here in Maryville today. I've sat there and I said, this thing's going to last. What's the, what, was I, what is it? What is it I said? Forever. forever. I'm going to be here forever at this stoplight. But in reality, I was only there for 20 minutes. I've been in the Walmart line before, and I've said, man, I've been in this line. Forever. And uh, before this sermon's over, you might say that preacher's going to drone on for forever and ever. I mean, our finite minds can't comprehend, really, a word like forever. All we know is what we know by experience between our birth and our death. But that's not forever. Forever is much longer than that. I mean, James, in, by inspiration of God, uh, said, What is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth a short time and vanisheth away. Our life is very short, but forever transcends that. Uh, forever transcends our earthly life and our earthly death. Now, unlike God, we all had a beginning. I had a beginning. Uh, when I was conceived uh, by the union of my mother and my father, I had a beginning right there, the spark of life. Amen. By the way, my life did not begin when I was born. It began before that. Amen. Amen. But uh, I had a beginning. You had a beginning. But like God in whose image we're all made, there'll never be a time when we don't exist. Right. We'll exist somewhere forever. So, uh, that's why forever matters. We're going to exist somewhere forever. And uh, I tell you what, I believe the Bible. And the Bible says that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever if the Lord is our shepherd. The Lord happens to be my shepherd. I got saved by His marvelous, matchless grace. When I called upon His name, believing He died on the cross for my sin, and believing that He rose from the dead, He saved me, birthed me into His family, and He became my shepherd, and I'll be with Him forever and ever and ever. Amen. 
There'll never be a time I'm separated from you. But also, if you do not know Jesus as your shepherd, if you've never been born again, you will exist forever also. But your forever will be much worse. Your forever will be in the lake of fire. And that's not my opinion. That's not my doctrine. That's what the Word of God says. So I tell you, you better consider forever. You better consider whether or not you've been saved and that you, if your forever will be with the Lord or if your forever will be without the Lord forever. And it all is determined by what you do with Jesus Christ. Will you be saved by Him or will you reject Him? Your forever will be set by that. Some people think they're forever set by the works that they do here on earth. But you're not saved by works. Right. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For you're saved by grace through faith, that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Right. It's what you do with Christ that determines your forever. Can you say as David did here in Psalm 23, uh, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever? I can say that. Can you say that? You can say that. If you'll just put your faith in Him, there's not a single person in this congregation in whom the Lord wouldn't say if they call upon Him believing. You say, preacher, you don't know what I've done in my past. It doesn't matter what you did in your past. It matters what Christ did 2,000 years ago upon Mount Calvary. If you put your faith in Him, you can be saved and be with Him forever. It's not a complicated thing. I hate that people try to complicate salvation. You can go to many churches, they'll make it so complicated that you have to have a degree to get saved. But I tell you this, you don't have to have a degree to be saved. You just have to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Call upon Him. Right. Believing. Right. And when I say believe, I mean trusting Him. Yep. need to trust Him. Now let's look at this word in light of the Bible. This word forever. Now, I could preach on a lot of things when it comes to forever. First of all, I could preach on that verse where it says, His mercy endureth forever. I love that verse. I mean, I'll never wear out His mercy and His grace. All the days of my life, surely goodness and mercy will follow me because His mercy endureth forever. And I tell you what, it will endure as long as God endures. Amen? So I could preach on that. I could preach on the verse where it says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I like that verse, by the way. That means what He considered sin a thousand years ago, five thousand years ago, He considers sin today. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. Amen? Amen. So don't think that, that God's changed. No, He's the same. He's the same today as He was 2,000 years ago too, by the way. 2,000 years ago, He so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth Him should not perish but have everlasting life. He's that same God. He's not willing that any should perish but that all should have everlasting life. Amen. He's that same God who empowered the folks there in the first century to preach the Gospel and see life's change as He is today. But we've lost sight of that, haven't we? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But I'm not going to preach on that, although I already did. I could preach on that verse where it says His Word is forever settled in heaven. Amen. And I could preach on the Word of God. It's settled, folks. Amen. Don't be telling me that you've got new revelation because you don't have any new revelation. The Word of God Amen. is finished. It is complete. Amen. Don't tell me you have some sort of word of knowledge because the Word of God is complete and He warns against anybody adding to it or taking away from it. Amen. It's forever settled in heaven. And I Amen. like that. I mean, that means that uh, all of a sudden salvation's plan can't change on me. Right. Right. Huh? I mean, if His Word wasn't settled, God could all of a sudden say, well, you got to be saved a different way now. But no, it's forever settled. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord is settled up there in heaven. That's the way you come to God and that's the way it will be. Amen. So let's get to the three things I actually want to preach on this morning. First is this. The presence of the Savior in a Christian's life will last forever. Amen. You hear what I said? Forever. Now, you say, give me some verses. Well, I'll give you some verses. 
Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 says, Go therefore teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Now the word forever is not used in that verse, but it is implied. He says, I will be with you always. You know what that means? He says, I'll be with you forever. If I'm with you now I'll, and you're saved now, I'll be with you from now on and here out. Amen. Forever. He promised to ever be with us. Right. Ain't that a grand thought? Amen. I mean, I can't see Him. I can't touch Him. But I know that He's with me. Amen. I mean, Peter agreed with me in that. He said in 1 Peter 1.8, He says, Whom having not seen, you love. Right. Well, I surely do love him, although I ain't seen him. He says, In whom, though ye now see him not, yet believe him, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory because I know that he'll never leave me, he'll never forsake me. I know him. Amen. I've not seen him with these eyes. But I tell you what, one of these days I will. But I know he's here. If you're saved by the blood, He's with you in the same way. Right. It's not that He's with me because I'm a preacher. No. He's with me because I'm a saint of God. Amen. He can be with you just like He's with me. He can talk with you just like He talks with me. He can walk with you just like He walks with me. Every one of us can have the same experience, folks. Right. And He'll be with you all the way, even in the world. Yeah. Now, do you ever feel lonely? You ever feel like nobody cares? Well, I can promise you this. If you're born of God, there's somebody that cares. Amen. And you need not be lonely because there's a friend that's thinking closer than a brother that's right there with you. It's like that old song, I'd have somebody with me. Amen. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I think about a, a story I read many years ago, and I've shared it a few times. Some of y'all may know it, but... I was reading one time about a missionary to, uh, to China. Well, actually, a Chinese believer. He was a part of an underground church that the missionary had started. And he was there reading his Bible in secret. If they had found him, they would have arrested him. He's reading the Bible, and all of a sudden he started to say, Glory to God! I wish I could say it in Chinese, but I don't know what that is. But I know how the word hallelujah in Chinese. Hallelujah, it's the same in every language. But anyway, he started shouting hallelujah, and the mom and his wife said, what's going on? And he said, I was just reading this verse right here. She said, what is it? He said, I was reading it right here, and the Lord mentioned my name. She said, what, 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 what where is that? And he said, he read it out loud. He said, lo, I'm with you all the way, even to the end of the world. And that man's name was Lo. He said it talked to me specifically. He said right here, He's always with me. If they come to arrest me, if they throw me in jail, the Lord has promised right here to be with me. Now that matched His name, Lo. But I tell you what you can do. You can take that word Lo out there and you can plug your name in there if you've been born again. I can say, David, I'm with you all the way even to the end of the world. I can say, Brother Wayne, the Lord says uh, he'd be with Wayne until the end of the world. I can say, Brother Tim, I'll be with you even to the end of the world. Right. Amen. Amen. He's not going to leave me. He's not only with you in the church house. He's with you in the schoolhouse, young person. Amen. He's not only with you here in the, the prayer room, but he's with you in the break room at work. Amen. Amen. He'll go with you when you go into the ER with your loved one, and things are uncertain. He'll go with you to the funeral home and to the cemetery. If things don't work out the way you hoped they would, He'd still be there with you, and He'll comfort you in that time of sorrow. He'll be with you always. Amen. I'm glad we don't have a fickle God, don't you? Amen. You ever had a fickle friend? Man, try to say that five times fast. <laughs> a fickle friend, uh, somebody who's there when things are going good. Yeah. Let something go bad. You can't find them anywhere. But I tell you what, God's not that way. When things go wrong, He just draws even closer. He don't withdraw from you. He draws closer. Aren't you glad you have a God like that saint? If you're not saved, you can have a God like that. You can have a friend like that. You just have to call upon You just have to be saved. The simplest thing in all the world is to be saved. Now, I think about a woman named Hagar. 
Y'all know who Hagar is? Back in the Old Testament, God promised Abraham he'd have a, he'd have a child. And the years went on, he didn't have a child. So him and his wife were getting way up there in years, and they started saying, well, I, I don't know if God's going to do what he said he was going to do. And, and, and Sarah, she says, well, I tell you what, just, just have a child with Hagar, my handmaid, and we'll count him as our son. And then uh, Hagar had a child, and then uh, Sarah got jealous about it. Imagine that. And she said, kick his handmaiden out and her kid. And I, I hate that Abraham did it, but he kicked her out. And here's Hagar out in the wilderness, and, and she don't have nowhere to go. And she sets her child over here, and she begins to cry. And then the Lord makes her some promises and watches out for her and gives her water to drink and sustains her child and makes a promise that they'll have a great nation that will come Amen. from that child. Amen. And you know what Hagar says? She says, Thou art the God that seest me. Amen. Thou art the God that seest me. You cared about me. When Abraham put me out and Sarah put me out, when I, I thought we was going to die, when I thought all hope was gone, you're the God that seeth me. Amen. And he's the God that sees you too. Right. You may be put out from your friends. You may have people turn their backs on you. But I tell you what, God still sees you. Yeah. I think about many people in the Bible that, that God treated that way. There's a man named Joseph. Y'all probably know who that is. Remember his daddy gave him a coat of many colors? He was the favorite child out of 12 children. Well, his brothers got jealous of him. And one day he came to check on his brothers and his brothers laid hold of him and threw him down in a pit with no water in it. And there Joseph was in that pit with no water. All by himself. Seemingly. But you know what the Bible says? It says, but the Lord was with Joseph. He was in there and you couldn't see a soul, but the Lord was there with him. And then he got sold as a slave to the Ishmaelites. And, he, and then he got sold uh, to Potiphar. And, Potiphar. and Potiphar's house, he did everything he was supposed to do. But yet Potiphar's wife lusted after him and tried to get him to commit adultery with her. And Joseph said, I can't do such a thing. He ran the other direction and left his coat in her hand. So you know what she did? She turned it around and blamed it on him. Said she tried, he tried to commit adultery with her and she yelled and kept his coat and he took off running. Joseph got thrown in jail for that. Unjustly. But you know what the Bible says about Joseph while he was in jail? The Lord was with Joseph in jail. Amen. And I tell you what, things looked bad there for Joseph for many years. But you know what? Since the Lord was with him, everything was all right. And in the end, Joseph became second command in the whole country of Egypt. Amen. I think about Abraham. He had no continuing city. He was a pilgrim and a stranger in the land. But you know what? He wasn't by himself. The Lord came on the plains of Amir and met with him also as a pilgrim. I think about Daniel, uh, and the Lord was with him when he was one of three commanders in the land, but also the Lord was with him when he was in the lion's den. Right. The Lord was with the three Hebrew children uh, when uh, they stood up against the king and said that they wouldn't defile themselves or they wouldn't bow down to that golden image in, in, uh, on, on the plains of Dura. But the Lord was also with them when they got thrown into that fiery furnace. Amen. He was not one outside the flames watching. He was in the flames with them as the fourth man. Amen. And you may find yourself as a Christian in the flames of persecution or the flames of trial, but I can tell you this, God will be with you if you're one of His. Amen. And if He's not one, you're not one of His, you can be one of His today. And be saved. I think about David and Goliath. I've mentioned them a lot recently. David said, I'll go up and fight that giant when all the other Israelites were quaking in their boots. Right. He said, the Lord will be with me. <coughs> huh? He said, the Lord will deliver you into my hand when the giant tried to put him down and tried to scare him off. He said, the Lord will I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord was with him. And the Lord guided that stone into the forehead of that giant. 
The Lord gave David the strength to pick up Goliath's own sword and lop his head off with it. But you know what? David also had the Lord with him when he was running for his life. When his son was trying to kill him. When Saul was trying to kill him. The Lord was with David there too. And David was able to say here in Psalm 23. He said there, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Right. When the enemies were surrounding him and he had nowhere to go, the Lord was still right there with David. Right. And nothing could happen to David unless God allowed it to happen. You need to come to realize that, Christian. Nothing can happen to you unless the Lord allows it. I mean, you think about Job. The devil could not have touched Job's flesh unless the Lord allowed it. Right. The devil could not have slain Job's children unless the Lord allowed it. The Lord will not let nothing happen to you unless He allows it. If He allows it, He allows it for a reason. And if He allows it, He'll give you the strength to endure it. Because there's no temptation taking you uh, such as God can't give you strength to get through it. If you're born again, He'll be with you always and forever. In seasons of prosperity, of course, He'll be with you, but He'll also be with you in the times of poverty. Amen. Amen. I've known many a saint of God who lived in the tent of poverty, but the Lord was with them, and the Lord saw them through. Sure he'll, he'll be with you in the time of pleasure, but He'll also be with you in the time of pain. God never promised anybody that never feel any pain in this world. God never promised us that we'd never feel a heartache. If you believe that prosperity garbage they preach on television, then you'll believe in something that's not in the Bible. Yeah. God said that you would endure persecution. You would have trials. And you show me any character in the Bible that didn't have any trials. I, I, people get the wrong idea. They think that if you just become a Christian and you get money to the church, God's just going to pour out material blessings on you all the time. That's a bunch of baloney. Amen. Matter of fact, I like baloney better than that. Amen. It's not like all the disciples retired and lived in mansions, was it? Right. Is that what happened? No, that's not what happened. All the disciples were killed for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. They were tortured. Amen. John only is the only one who survived being killed. And he was exiled on Patmos. The first century Christians were thrown the lions. And they all said, hey, my life is worth dying for Christ. Amen. Or giving for Christ. He'll be with you during the pain, though. He'll not leave you. Think about that when Stephen was standing there preaching and they took up stones. They started hurling stones at Stephen and those stones started hitting him. You know what he did? He looked up and he saw the Lord standing in the right hand because the Lord was with him. In health and in sickness, He'll be with you. He'll all be with you always. And when it's time for death, He'll greet you there at the banks of the Jordan River. And He'll usher you across. Amen. Amen. Personally, Himself. If after all, I tell what David said. He said, Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Amen. For Thou art with me. And He will be with me forever. He shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. He'll be with me forever. Secondly, the portion of the saved is forever. First Peter 1 Peter 1.4, it says, To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Once again, the word forever is not mentioned in that verse, but it is implied because he says that our inheritance, our portion, is incorruptible. That means it won't, it won't corrupt. It won't disappear. It will be there how long? Forever. He says it fadeth not away. Now the grass withereth, the flower fadeth. The world one of these days is going to pass away the great noise when he makes a new heaven and a new earth. <laughs> or renovates rather the old. Uh, but our portion will be forever. Amen. It will not fade away. It's incorruptible. And it, it is forever. A portion refers to an inheritance, right? 
Remember the prodigal son? He took his inheritance early. He took his portion. He went to the far country. He wasted it on riotous living. Y'all recall that story? He had a portion. He had an inheritance. I have an inheritance in Christ. Since I've been born again, I am joint heirs together with Jesus. Amen. He is the heir of all things, and I'm an heir under Him. Amen. Being the firstborn, He has a double portion. He'll be the king, but I will be a king under the king. Amen. He is the king of kings, Lord of lords. I am a prince with God under my big brother, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And if you're saved, you are too. The Bible says of us who have been redeemed, us who have been saved, that we will rule and reign with Christ forevermore. Yeah. Amen. That's something you get to do, Christian. Because you're going to be with Him forever. And since He rules, you'll rule. I'm glad of that. I mean, I was a filthy pauper. And I'm not talking about materially here on earth. I'm talking about I was spiritually a pauper. I had no coin to buy my way into heaven. My righteousnesses were as filthy rags, like Isaiah said. Right. Nobody that a king would look upon, but he looked down upon me in love and mercy, and he brought me up out of that horrible pit. He set my feet on the solid rock. He put a ring on my finger and a royal chain around my neck. Amen. Amen. Made me a child of the king. I was like Mephibosheth. What a name. Mephibosheth was being carried by his mother there in the Old Testament. The enemy came and his mother running to get away from him he tripped on a cobblestone and dropped little Mephibosheth to the ground breaking his feet or breaking his legs or his ankles. But anyways, he was crippled from that fall. He ended up in a place called Lodibar, which means literally the house of no bread. One day when David was sitting on the throne, he said, I want to show kindness uh, to Saul's house. And Mephibosheth was at Saul's house. And he said to his servant Ziba, he said, Is there anybody left of the house of Saul that I can show mercy to? And Ziba said, Yeah, there's this Mephibosheth, this crippled boy down in Lodabar. And you know what David said to the king? He said, Go down there and fetch him. That's how come I know David was a southern. He said, Go fetch him. Right. So uh, Ziba goes down there. He finds Mephibosheth. He knocks on the door. And Mephibosheth opens the door. And you know what Ziba does? He ushers him up to the king's house. And he sits at the king's table. Amen. Right. Amen. That's what happened to me. Sure. Amen. I was spiritually crippled. God the Father says, I want to show kindness. Huh? He sent His only begotten Son to save me. The Holy Spirit, like the servant Ziba, came to where I was. Amen. And when I called upon the name of the Lord, I was ushered to the king's house. Amen. Amen. You ever thought about how that all transpired? I mean, Mephibosheth's granddaddy tried to kill King David. And maybe when that rapping come on the door and he saw that it was uh, Ziba, the servant of David, maybe he was scared. He probably was. I, my granddaddy tried to kill him. I'm a part of a different dynasty. He wants to wipe us all out so we can't try to take the throne one day. Yeah. He's probably scared. But then this... Ziba comes in and says, you go into the king's house and sit at the table. Can you imagine how the fireworks of heaven took loose in his soul? Amen. Maybe he said to Ziba, he said, I can't, I can't work as a servant in your, in your uh, castle because I'm lame on my feet. But he said he didn't, come, he didn't come to make you a servant. He came to make you sit at the king's table. Amen. That's what the Lord did for me. He took this old sinner, an outcast, an alien, uh, a stranger, and he saved me. I was a child of hell, but now I'm a child of the king. Yep. He dried my tears. He made me a mansion up there in heaven. And one of these days I will see it with these eyes, and I'm moving in. Amen. Isn't that what he said in John 14? He said, in my father's house are many mansions. Yep. If it were not so, I would have told you. I remember when I used to spend the night over at... Uh, uh, with my over uh, my cousins, that's actually Brother Rick and Emily's house at Knoxville. Me and Brian, his uh, their son would have we'd have a good time. Yeah. But you know what? After a while, you get kind of homesick and you'll go home. No matter how good a time you have, it. that's like on vacation. You get kind of torn toward the end of the week. Sometimes you're like, I kind of want to go home, but I like it here too. But I remember I had, had, I'd hear Dad pulling up, and I tell you what, it excited me. Right. Well, I tell you what. 
I'm having a good time now that Jesus is on His way to pick me up. Yes. Amen. And I'm going home. Yeah. Amen. And that home I'm going to is much better than the house we lived in back then there on Black Forest Drive. I'm talking about my home as a street of gold through the middle of it. I'm talking about I'll see more than just a mom and dad and my sister. I'll see all my loved ones that's gone on before. Amen. Amen. I think about another verse that has to do with this. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it says, it's talking about Him coming back for His saints. We call that the rapture of the church. And I believe in the rapture of the church. Don't let nobody shake your faith in that. The Lord is coming in the clouds. He's calling to meet up. And He's calling us to come up and meet Him in the air. Amen. It's a coming. And then it says, So shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. You know what that means? Forever. My face shall become sight. I'll see Him as He is. I'll move into my long home forever. And then to the last point, the third one. The punishment for sinners is going to be forever. I wish I didn't have to bring this one up. I wish it weren't true. But I believe this book. Amen. The Bible is God's truth. And it teaches that there is a place of forever torment for those who do not believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Revelation 14, 11, the smoke of their torment ascendeth up Forever. Amen. Christ said in Matthew chapter 18 verse 8, He says, Therefore if thy hand defend thee, uh, cut it off. Cast them from thee, for it's better to enter into life uh, halt or maimed, rather than having two hands and two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Amen. Everlasting fire means forever fire. The Bible says of that horrible place that those who have never been saved goes, it says that there's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. I remember reading many years ago about a, a dog who, who had gotten, gotten rabies. And that dog was out in the distance and a guy foolishly took a rock and he threw it at that rabid dog. And you know what that dog did to that rock? He just started gnashing at it. He threw a stick and the dog started gnashing at the stick. He should have left the dog alone or shot it. Right. But, he, but he threw stuff at it and gnashed at it. That's what it's talking about, gnashing of teeth. That's what it is in hell. That dog is in such pain and such turmoil that it gnashes at everything. What a terrible place that is. It talks about it as being a place where the fire is not quenched. Amen. Forever. Now, for, for an illustration of this, don't really do this. But here's the illustration. Go home figuratively. Put your finger on the burner of your stove. Leave it there for 10 seconds. And see what happens. Okay. Leave it there uh, for just 7 seconds and see what happens. It's not going to feel too good, is it? No. I mean, I touched the, the carburetor on my chainsaw today and put a big old blister the size of a dime on my hand. But I tell you what, the lake of fire is longer than 10 seconds. It's longer than 7 seconds. It's forever. It's not 10 years. It's not 1,000 years. It's forever. Why would you want to go to a place like that? I've heard people say, oh, we're going to go to hell. We're going to have a big party. No, you're not. Amen. It's a terrible place to be. But you don't have to go there. Nobody in there has to go there. Not a single person has to go there. God's not willing that any should perish. And He's so serious about keeping people out of hell that He sent His only begotten Son to make a way of salvation for us. Amen. It's a place of outer darkness. I don't like the dark. Do you? Unless I'm sleeping, I like to be totally dark. But There's no rest day or night in hell. Right. A lot of bad stuff happens in the dark, isn't it? I tell you, I like these days that last in the 9 o'clock at night myself. They can't get around. I don't like the dark, but it's a place of darkness. It's where those who die without Christ will spend there forever. We read about the rich man in Luke, uh, how uh, that he had all of his senses when he was in hell. He could see. See, back in those days, uh, there was a place called Sheol. 
It was called hell, but hell was a little bit different. You had over here paradise. Over here you had the fire, and there was a great, great gulf between it. And you could speak, and you could see back and forth across that great gulf, but you couldn't pass over that great gulf. So those who died in disbelief went to the fire. Those who died in belief went into paradise. The rich man looked over at being tormented in the flames as what he said himself. He looked over and he saw Abraham and Lazarus. Yeah. He could see. You take your senses with you when you go. By the way, just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, when Jesus died on the cross, he went down there in the paradise. Remember what he said to the thief? He said, today you'll be with me where? In paradise. He took them folks out of paradise, took them on up in the glory because the price they had been paid forever for them to be able to go in. They couldn't go in before, but they could go in after the price was paid. Read Romans chapter 3. Acts chapter 2. But anyways, he could see. He could feel. He said, I'm tormented in these flames. I don't know what kind of body you have in hell, but you have some sort of a body. He said... Send Lazarus to take his finger and put it in some water and drop it on my tongue. Lazarus had a finger. The rich man had a tongue. While they were in the flames. He could feel. He could thirst. He could remember. Abraham said, don't you remember in your days how you did well? But now, Lazarus is comforted and you're tormented. Yeah. I thought the memory would be a terrible thing to take a hell with you. Would you remember every single sermon that was preached to you and every opportunity that you had to be saved? Every time the Holy Spirit uh, beckoned you to come and you rejected and you said no? Yeah. Yes, your memory will be there. It will be a place of separation. Remember what I said? There was a great gulf that separated the righteous from the wicked. And there always will be a gulf that separates those that believe and those that believe not. Right, we shall ever be with the Lord. Right. But the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever. Amen. Do you see that? There will be a time of separation. I've had people often ask me about tears in heaven. And I said, well, he wipes them away, doesn't he? If he wipes them away, they have to be there. But the context of that, where it says God wipes away all tears, if you find out where it says that at, it says at the very end of the book of Revelation. It says that when the new heaven and new earth is made, right after the great white throne judgment. Can you imagine the great white throne judgment where people are standing before God and they're being cast in a lake of fire? Can you imagine there not being tears shed? I'm glad He wipes away our tears afterwards. But I certainly wouldn't want to stand there and somebody say, why didn't you tell me? You have the gospel, why didn't you tell me? There'll be a time of separation. You see it all throughout the Scriptures. John the Baptist talked about the wheat, that talked about the, the chaff being separated from the wheat. Right. Jesus talked about that. Psalm 1 talks about that. Be a time of separation forever. There's a song I used to sing from time to time. I, I barely made it through it every time I tried to sing it called Sorry I Never Knew You. Y'all know that song? At the end, the little girl looks at the daddy. He's having a dream and says, Sorry, we can't go with you. We must stay on this beautiful shore. Sorry, we still love you, but you can't be our dad anymore. Why? Because he was an unbeliever and had to go to the lake of fire. That rich man, you say, is he still there? Yeah. He's still there. Jesus told that story 2,000 years ago. That rich man is still there. Was he there when Jesus died and rose again? Yeah. Was He there when Rome fell? Yes. Was He there during the Middle Ages? Yes. Was He there when the pilgrims crossed the ocean? Yes. Was He there during World War I and World War II? Yes. He's been there 2,000 years and He'll be there forever. Amen. Don't let that happen to you. You ever seen a sign that says, don't let this happen to you? Well, I tell you what, if I could put a picture of this rich man in hell before you, where you could see it and you could feel it, and I could say, oh, don't let that be you, every one of you would fly to the Savior right there. 
I pray that I put some kind of picture before you if you're lost. Why not come and be saved? So in closing, the presence of the Savior is there forever with the believer. Amen. And be there with you forever. Uh, the, the portion of the saved will be forever. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But the punishment for sinners will be forever. Don't let that happen to you. Be saved today as we pray.